Right guys, so um, air box off to get rid of this mess. So first part, <laughs> really nice and easy. Just unclip the snorkel. Remember, I've already changed the air filter in that. So I'm just gonna put that off safe to one side. And then it's a matter of, um, there's a couple of connectors here. You can see here onto the air intake temperature sensor, uh, which we'll need to remove possibly from the air box because I'm not sure whether the new air box will have that sensor complete with it or not. Even if it does, probably worth using mine because I have already tested that in the diagnostic and I know it works. Two mugs in a workshop. Previously on Two Mugs in a Workshop. We took a huge gamble when we bought this BMW G310R off eBay. Untried, untested, with no recorder mileage. In the previous episode, we came painfully close to completing the mechanical items on the BMW G310R. With only the clutch cable left to install, we got the new cable fitted only to find that I'd ordered the wrong clutch lever. And then I found this damage to the airbox. Absolutely, I've lost the will to live with this bike yesterday. I had to have a day off from it all. Oh, hello, Mark. Hello. Welcome, servants. Talking of which, uh, I made the last coffee. Removing the clips that clip on down the side of the air intake, these clips are always a bit of a pain to remove, to be honest with you. Um, the best way is to get the screwdriver in, but you've got to get right around the back of the clip to push the little tabs in and then push it off. If you sit there just trying to wiggle it like that, you're going to do nothing. It will just twist. You've actually got to get right in and kind of flick them little tabs down in order to release it without damaging anything. The Intake sensor itself, you can actually grab that with your fingers, pull the tab out towards you, and lift straight up. I'm tempted not to cut this pipe off. Ordinarily, I would just cut that to remove the old air box. But, I don't know. So I'm gonna have to remove it from the air valve side. So, just coming around, move the tripod out of the way. It's coming around. It's going to be a bit awkward to get to on the side of this valve because it's on the back side of it. But I'm going to see if I can get that pipe off uh, in situ and remove it complete. Okay, so I gave up on that idea of trying to remove it in situ. Uh, I used some cutters and I've cut the pipe down towards the valve. The reason is I've put a bit of light on so we can see what's going on. There's no um, clamp on these pipes they're just a push fit they're going to be really tight and of course then the risk is that you're going to end up damaging the um, the valve itself which we don't want to do so if I cut it there I can just cut a slit in the pipe then and work backwards and remove the pipe nice and safely without damaging the, um, the, the secondary air valve okay so there you go you can see I just put a couple of little slits in that pipe there and then managed to Pull it off quite easy in the end, actually, not as bad as I thought. It's going to need a little bit of grease probably going back on, though, with the new pipe. Last thing you want to do is to damage that there, which is obviously what this numpty did here when they were trying to mess about with the airbox. Ah, I've distracted him. And, and, no. has it overflowed? No. Oh, no. damn it. We have this competition whenever one's pouring a coffee with the machine. We We're trying to distract people long enough so the overflows all over the worktop. But unfortunately, on this occasion, Mark's a victor and I've failed. When my coffee's ready, son, bring it through. I'm a lady. I'm a lady and I do ladies things. Hang on, Mark. We have ladies watch this channel, you know. We have lady subscribers. Quite a few of them now as well. So yeah. Lady bikers, cool. Lots of lady bikers out there. You're going to say something intelligent. Master, your coffee awaits you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And apologise to any ladies for the offence you might have caused. Little Britain. Little Britain. Little Britain. Oh, I, I can't. Do ladies, I do ladies things. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think you could air that these days, though, eh? <laughs> Never mind. There's no They're airs. not politically correct. There's no airs and graces in our workshop. I don't cross the T's and I don't dot the I's. Very good. Cheers. Yeah. Mark's come to join the party here. The House of Horrors continues. So, <laughs> wow. I was just about to let the bolts go up on the top of the air box, but obviously you've got to let it go um, where it attaches down onto the intake. And we noticed that this clamp was, well, we didn't notice it was loose at first, did we, Mark? We noticed it was on, the on a bit of an angle, uh, as Mark politely put it. Um, Somebody's put a clamp on around this. Look at this. It's got one of those Otica ear clamps on. If we can fetch it back around, we thought, how the hell are we going to going to undo that? Uh, we won't have to worry about that because it was never tightened up. Look at this. So somebody's put a new clamp on there. Didn't have the right tool or worked out that, I mean, they're a nightmare to use them clamps anyway, aren't they, Mark? Yeah, they're horrible. Two little fingers that go underneath each yeah. side of it. So they've worked out how I'm going to get the access to clamp that up and didn't bother. So when the air box comes off, which I'm hoping it comes off very easily, uh, when it goes back on, I'll be honest, I'm going to get a Jubilee clip on that because it'll be a lot easier to tighten up. There's no access in there to try and get the, uh, the, the, the correct tool on that clamp. Might as well replace it with a Jubilee clip. It'll be absolutely fine. Look at this. This is what I have to put up with Lucky. He's back with his head torch back on. He's got this head torch from a guy next door. He loves it. And unfortunately for me, because my retinas can't take anymore, the charging cable arrived today. Look, it looks like, I don't know whether you look like a Dalek or Tinky Winky off the Teletubbies, Mark. I, I, I really can't decide, but... Uh, looks like this. It's a quality oh, look, in it? Or maybe the Borg off Star Trek. You look like one of the Borg. So, um, <laughs> it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Right, so uh, just going to remove the bolts. They're just 5 mil hexes up on the top. Everything else seems loose, so hopefully this thing will just drop off. It's not going to fall off. Uh, look carefully, you can see there, there's a cable tie. So someone's cable tied uh, that on there. And also, you've got a breather hose coming off the bottom of the air box, and it goes down. I'm going to come round the bike. Down the bike, comes down to the bottom of the uh, crankcase there, the engine there. So probably... You would have thought it'd be easy to let it go at this end, to be honest, and then lift it all out, but it has got one of the famous um, ear clamps on it. So uh, the other end, up by the air box, whether it's standard or not, I'm not sure, but there is um, a Jubilee clip on there, so it might be easier just to get the access to that and release it at the Jubilee clip. Ugh, more bad news, uh, or, well, good news, I suppose. I just grabbed that pipe there, look, and it just fell off in my hands, the one that had been bonded on, so I'm really glad I did this. So I'm guessing that there was an air leak there, and I'm guessing that because this thing isn't fixed on properly, um, where we're going to the engine, the engine side intake, uh, we've probably had an air leak there as well. And coming back to all those poor starting problems that we had in the earlier videos, I'm going to make a bet that this thing runs a bit better after we've done this, but how are we going to get this air box off? And this is probably why somebody decided to bond that pipe on, because they couldn't be bothered to uh, go through all the hassle of removing all of these various hoses that are coming off the bottom of the air box. Okay, so we've got some very small cutters in there. Cut the cable tie off, and I've managed to get the air box free of the top of the engine. So that's good. That's a good start, but I've still got all these other hoses connected at the bottom there which I've got to work out how to release but hopefully now I've got a bit more wiggle room with it I'll be able to just work our way at them. All you can do when you get to these situations is just be patient and take your time I mean one thing at a time right that's all you can do. Um, on the bike access is, is limited down here so what I've done is I've just dropped the ECU out of the way off to one side which has given me access to one of the Jubilee clips I need to get onto, and that's a seven mil. And with um, with my small ratchet, I can get in there. So I'm already on that. On that, I've already started to loosen it off. That pipe actually came off really easy, simple. Um, all I did was I just gave it a bit of a pull from further down. You can see where it goes down. It's a breather, so it comes 
the bottom of the engine there. I just gave it a pull from a bit further down and it practically fell off. More good news. So things aren't always as bad as you think, I guess. Um, this is going to be really difficult to film though. There's not much access. There is a bit more wiggle on the airbox now, but I still can't get underneath it. So I'm going to have to come in down the front of the frame. And if I point, you see these little clamps down here? I'll see if I can get the camera to lock the focus on those clamps. You see them down there? Thank goodness they haven't used my favourite ear clamps on there because there's no way you'd get in there on those. You'd have to probably take the coolant expansion tank off and all sorts. And to be honest, that might be coming off anyway. Uh, but we'll see where we go. So these clamps, um, they're not strong. They're a little bit rusty. Uh, but you just pinch them together. Um, so hoping that when we pinch those clamps together, the hoses kind of drop off or we can just pull them off gently. I'm hoping they're not as tough to get off as that hose that was on the secondary air valve. Only one way to find out. Just to create a little better access, I've removed the electrical connectors off the throttle here. Um, you can see there. Now, if I lift up the the um, the air box and pull it toward and push it away rather, so lift it up and push it towards the handlebars a bit, I've given myself more access to get onto that clamp, uh, which is you can now see it, see it around the back on the grey pipe. So I lift it up, push it forwards a bit, hold it in position, and she'll be able to get some pliers on that and give them a bit of a squeeze. And I mean. That air clip's actually moving freely by hand, so I just need to get a pair of pliers on it and give it a pinch. All right, guys, you can see I've slid that along a bit now. Again, if I can get it to focus. There you go, slid it along. And I've used these um, sort of 90 degree long nose pliers. They work really nicely getting that off. Just grab the three little prongs, squeeze them together, easy. And the even better news is, just pulled off simply by hand, didn't even have to grab it, just grabbed the head with the bend on the tube and just pushed it to one side, it dropped off. Sorry Mark, what was that, what did you just say then? I look a right idiot trying to struggle. Yeah, well. I'm a, I'm a BMW tech here and I'm struggling. Thing is, we removed the air box, right, and Mark's now trying to put it back to prove that he knows how exactly he took it out, which clearly he doesn't. But I have to admit, there was an electrical connector on there uh, underneath and I, I saw it I thought I had a little bit more cable and as I was pulling it the plug kind of dropped off it hasn't damaged anything I don't think but I'm wondering if it was pushed all the way home in the first place I guess I guess we're gonna find out all right Mark forget it come on we'll work out that with the new one we'll leave it out lift the box away come on. will you stop don't, swearing at go, me go and play with your box over there come on box, that's it there you go you dirty boy you and then you see that electrical connector there with the blue band around it um, that's the one that kind of just fell off. So whether it came out under duress or whether it wasn't quite pushed home, I don't know, but I'm grateful it came off. So that's it. So, and now that we've exposed all of the tank and all that, all of the, sorry, the frame, would have been a hell of a lot easier to put that clutch cable in, wouldn't it now, rather than a couple of days ago. Down, eh? Oh, don't start. Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> just unbelievable. Do that. Cable tight. Sort yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. There we go. So I'm stuck now because we've got no parts. So waiting for the part to arrive. Uh, there won't be anything left of this. I might as well chop the frame and do all sorts to it, Mark, while I'm here. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> what they call them? Hard tails? So, tails? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. I'm, like I say, we're not really bikers, are we? We like the look of them, but we don't got a clue what we're doing. But it's coming apart anyway. Right, so bearing in mind we're going to need a Jubilee clamp for the bottom of that air box where it goes to the engine. Uh, there's the old ear clamp around there. There's somebody didn't even bother to clamp up. I've sent Mark off to get me a new clip. Did you get one? Yeah, I've got one in my stocks. Yeah. You did? Go on yeah. In. Oh, yeah, I should. Yeah, that'll fit nicely. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Did yeah. you see any problems? No, absolutely none. Apart from you. <laughs> <laughs> old air intake. Strip all of the mounting points, some like rubber bushes, they just pull straight out. Um, you can even strip the clips off the top because they can be pulled separately. And obviously before I throw this thing in the bin, I want to remove the air intake temperature sensor. Now, I was gonna reuse this one because I know it works, but 
a bit of a pain to get off. So I've already loosened this, so here's how I actually removed it. When it's fitted, there's a lug in the sensor. You can just about see it there. And that lug needs to line up with the gap in the inner part of the seal. So as you can see, I've already twisted I've already twisted this through 90 degrees. So in order to remove it, sprayed some WD-40 around it. I'm not sure that did an awful lot. I have very, very gingerly got a pair of pliers on it. The last thing you want to do is break that plug and gave it a twist through 90 degrees. Once you've got it through 90 degrees, it's a bit easier to get the pliers on. And then I pushed up inside the air sensor. So if I show you that, can see inside there the air sensor comes through into that little gap and I pushed up with my finger as I leave it out with the pliers okay it does come out it's just a really tight push fit but it will come out um, so I'm confident that I could replace this on the bike once the air box is back and fitted again so worst case scenario I can remove the pressure sensor and put this one, which I know to be a good unit on. But um, for the time being, I'm just going to remove this and keep it safe somewhere. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Out comes the air intake temperature sensor. I'll keep this safe somewhere for later. The idle control valve is held onto the air box using two 4mm inner hex bolts. BMW say that this valve should be removed before the air box is removed from the frame or replaced back into the frame of the bike. But we proved it can be done with the valve in situ reasonably easily. Here's the Jubilee clip I intend to fit. It says Norma on it and it's 45 to 65 millimeters in diameter. I did try a 70, but it just wouldn't sit in the recess of the seal. So this one is a really lovely fit, arguably better fit than the original one. And as you can see, it's just a standard Jubilee clip with a 7mm screw on it. So it should be a bit easier to reattach, I'm hoping. To get the pipes back on the side of the airbox, uh, it looks like I've got to move the coolant tank out of the way. Sod's law that I've already done the coolant change. Hopefully it's just a case of moving it to one side though. Just held in with these little plastic rivets, just get a cross head on it, screw out the centre part hopefully, mine came out easy enough, and then just pull the rivet out and the whole thing will just pull away from the bike. So as you can see, whole thing's loose. Getting the airbox back into position was just a game of patience really. It does say in the uh, BMW instructions to um, remove parts off it before you refit it and then fit them back in through the side of the um, coolant tank. But it will go back in. You just gotta be patient with it. Don't force anything and all of the cables like the clutch cable, throttle cable, just make sure they're all well out of the way to so drop it back into the cavity. Just do it a little bit at a time and it will fit. With the coolant tank out of the way, I've just appended it off to one side for now, just the expansion tank anyway. You can see there, there's the, one of the electrical plugs that I need to refit. And if I can get the camera to focus in on that a bit more, there's a couple of pipes as well down the bottom there, the bottom of the shot underneath the electrical connector. They're going to be really tight. And again, it's just going to be a patience game putting them back on. The bottom one looks absolutely horrible to get to. So I think it's going to be a case of getting those two pipes on the valve at the bottom there. Um, and then probably trying to sit the large pipe on the throttle body and then I can go around the other side and tackle that bigger pipe from the crankcase breather. So I can see there I've got the bottom hose uh, on. It's a bit of a battle. Uh, need some right angle pliers or something really. I've lubed and greased the tube, put a bit of silicon grease on it just before I slid the rubber on to make life easier. And those little clips are easy to get. You just get them with your fingers and just pull them up into situ. Just patience. You can see I've got both of those on now. Um, the second one was even easier. Again, a bit of silicon grease really helps. Now, the electrical connector here, um, 
you can't see that too well and I can't really focus the camera while I've got need a third pair of hands um, yeah I'm gonna leave that to last because there's not much um, slack on that electrical cable and I actually pulled it out in the first place so I'm just gonna move around the other side now and do the crankcase breather the clip on the crankcase breather hose that comes up from the bottom of the engine up to the bottom of the left side of the bike on the airbox. Easy to get that pipe on, it slid on quite easily, got it all the way home, just using two fingers to get it into position and then give it a quick push, no problem at all. Just make sure you don't over tighten that Jubilee clip, don't need to go gung ho on them, just nip them up. All the hoses back on the airbox, mustn't forget to put the electrical connector back on, so uh, there's not much give on that cable, so definitely do that last. And there's the Jubilee clip around the where the airbox meets the throttle body. Just again, don't over tighten that, just nipped it up, but really pleased with how that's gone because that's um, now he's definitely secure and isn't coming off. And actually, it's really easy to get to for maintenance. Two bolts at the rear of the airbox this one and the one over the other side. Uh, they're holding it all down. The third one at the back, just remember that's put on later when we put the tank cover on, so that's fine as it is for now. Next thing to do is to replace the pipe here, the one that was broken. So that's where, it, if you remember, the old air box was snapped off and then somebody tried to bond it. Got a brand new hose to go on there. Mark's in for the assist on this one, which is always good. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm going to hold the camera. Well, we fit the new spark plug, genuine plug, BMW. I'm sure you've all seen a spark plug before. Goes in that hole there, look. Deeper than the Grand Canyon down there. So um, we've taken a bit of tape off the top. Make sure you don't drop anything down there, for God's sake. And while I hold the camera, I don't know where you can get in there, Mark, with the camera in the way. Marks. Drop the plug down the L. We haven't got the right tool for this, actually, but... Uh, we're making do, it'll be all right. Always screw them in by hand first. You don't want to be cross-threading spark plugs, that's for sure. It's not going in easy. It's not going in at all. Don't have to over it, just a little nip. Just nip that up, job done. And then it's just a coil on the top. Just push fit, push it in. Job done. There we go, another one to tick off the list. Righto. Just grease the end of the pipes there before we try and put this on. These were a tight fit coming off, but they've been on there for a long while. So only one way the pipe will go on. So let's just give it a go. Do you want to have a go, Mark, while I, um, while I film? Don't snap that pipe there because finding a new air box is not easy. Oh, definitely put a heat gun on those hoses when you put them onto the air box. It just makes the whole thing a lot more pliable, but very gentle heat. And then just be very careful as you're pushing it in. But pleased with that. Got that on both ends, that pipe. So ideal. Don't forget to put the temperature sensor plug back on and the two clips coming down the side of the airbox. Don't forget to check all the plugs have uh, been replaced as well on the top before you start putting the fuel tank back on. Around the other side, the coolant expansion tank's back in situ. Right then, refitting the fuel tank. I've just loosely put it in position. Uh, remember from the removal, there was only three real components to this. Um, you've got the breather pipe, which runs down the back of the frame and goes down through, you can see like a square bracket on the bottom of the frame at the bottom there. It goes through that, okay. And then might just be worth just cable tying it over to the side, out of the way of the exhaust. This one wasn't, but I think it should have been um, held out the way of the exhaust. You've also got underneath, you've got the, um, the fuel supply connector, which should just clip in. And you can see with the yellow and red on it, the electrical connector for the fuel pump. And that's it. That's all there is. So I'm not going to show you connecting all that up. It's straightforward and you've seen it all coming off. So just the reverse of the removal. Can you see the fuel can in that? Yeah, can see it. Is this the fuel that you nicked out of the car in the car park? Shh, shh. 
customer car siphon the fuel out. <laughs> Diesel's all right, isn't it? Diesel in that, yeah. Yeah, feel right, won't it? Fill up a green, fill up a green. Fuel's in. Mark's run off. Retreated to a safe distance, or is coming to cause chaos. You waiting for the door? I'll be out of there. I'll be out of there before you trust me. So here we go. First time trying to start the BMW. It's going to leave the ignition on just for a minute or two, just a few seconds. Just let the pump prime things. And squeeze in the clutch just in case. Although we are on the stand, and let's see if it fires. Not the first time, so let it reset. Let's have another go. Just a bit of fuel coming through the system. Oh, tried then. Hopefully third time lucky. Fired, cut out again. See if we can get it going again. There we go. And even better news, it hasn't cut out like it used to. All good. So um, it's obviously going to, the fuel would just be settling itself out coming through the system. The bike's probably got loads of error codes on it now because we've been dragging it, firing it without fuel in there. Um, but it's running lovely. Sounds a lot better than it was. Let's give it a little rev. Yeah, really pleased with that. So um, knock the engine off. Hmm, nice smell of burning of something somewhere. Hopefully, nothing important. I'm um, just going to have a quick check around, just make sure, obviously, things like there's no fuel leaking anywhere. Now, if you remember, I refilled the cooling system. So, going to make sure that I bleed that out as well. So, I need to pay some attention to that and just make sure the coolant level is good and top it up. We're just running it up to temperature now. We're up to about 85 degrees. Push the trip computer on the digital dash. You can see the engine temperature. Engine ran up to 104 degrees and then the fan kicked in. It's quite noisy. You can't miss it when the fan kicks in and it's dropping back nicely. Coming around the other side, cooling temperature levels all good. So happy with the cooling system. Clean bill of health. Here's Mark. Is it cutting down the sun? Yeah. Mark and I would just like to thank you for watching. We'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and like this video. Subscribing doesn't cost a penny and it helps you stay up to date with the latest going ons at Two Mugs in a Workshop. Can't believe it. Not bad for an amateur, eh? No. That's all right. Happy yeah. days. Can't make a living out of that. Get a living out of it now. I hope not. I don't want to make a living out of anything. Uh, right, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's all going back together again. And the next couple of episodes, we're going to get on to making it look pretty again. So. That could be quite exciting, trust me.